I get those goosebumps every time You come around, yeah You lose my mind, you make everything so fine Worry about those comments I'm way too numb, yeah It's way too dumb, yeah I get those goosebumps every time I need the heim Throw that to the side, yeah I get those goosebumps every time, yeah When you're not around me Throw that to the side, yeah I get those goosebumps every time, yeah Seven, one, three, Hello, we are back again, back to back, talking tunes tonight, okay? Uh, but welcome to Loaded Mag NFC. we're back again uh, for another special. Um, we're going to talk all things Toon, Newcastle United, and we've got uh, the right three guests to do that, that's for sure. But uh, first of all, Daz, Chris, how are you on this fine Wednesday evening? I'm good, Pete, day after day, I'm seven little boy, went, went to the Astro. Getting a bit of practice oh, in for, yeah. for Friday. And uh, yes, in seven and a half hours, I will be getting up to make my way to the airport and on to Newcastle. So I'll be landing in Newcastle tomorrow uh, before afternoon. So uh, bring it on. Looking forward to it. Happy days. Chris, how are you? All right, mate. Yeah, busy, busy day in work, not going to lie, but um, just very excited for the weekend now. Really looking forward to uh, to getting on the pitch with yourselves and the and the, the rest of the squad. And yeah, can't wait. And then obviously we've got the match on Saturday. But more importantly, and firstly, we've been really looking forward to tonight's talking tune as well with the boys. It's great to have Matty, Josh and Adam on. So yeah, really looking forward to tonight's show. How are you, Pete? You all right, mate? Oh, good. Oh, good. Yeah, buzzing. I'm buzzing for this show. And uh, yeah. it just means it just means getting these boys on. It's like it's it's that one day, one day closer uh, to the to the big re reunion. Second time we we get to get together and, and enjoy a game together. Uh, well, third time actually, um, but but we get to do this and we get to do the the charity match and we all do it. Um, you know, playing a playing football match is always good, but doing it for a great cause as well, the Alan Shearer Foundation. All of that good stuff comes this weekend. So absolutely buzzing for it. Um, so yeah, I'm, 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 I'm good. I was doing some um, prep work for uh, this weekend. I'm sure I'll talk to you boys afterwards. Uh, sure. I know what it means. I know what it means. <laughs> you know what it means. Yeah, so uh, yeah, just do a little bit of work today. Um, we'll see what comes to that. But uh, look, let's not beat around the bush. Um, let's get the boys in. Let's get Jordy Josh back in the house. Welcome back, Josh. Hello there, lads. I hope you're all okay. I think this is about me, me fifth loaded mag appearance or cup, uh, shall we say. So it's very fantastic yeah. to come back on there. Uh, I've got a feeling we're going to speak about something different, the Premier League in Newcastle United football today. And I can't wait, lads. Good stuff. Bring it on. Man, now, I, on. before the show, Josh was down in, in Nirvana top. Could cool. have left it on, Josh, because we, we, we respect that as well. But a uh, <laughs> great choice in, in, the, in, the, in the replacement. Love it. Cheers, man. <laughs> That's what we do. Good stuff. And um, we've got the top man in the house. We've got Adam P uh, coming back to join us again. Welcome back, Adam. Everyone, it's good to see you all again. Hope things are going well. I'm hoping actually to have a much better time on Friday from last year's charity <laughs> match. But um, I was a bit nervous at first, actually, because I just played a charity match with like said Josh and Matty. You'll see shortly um, on Saturday. Now we came out with a match, we did it for the food bank. My quads were killing. So I think the last couple of days, oh, God, I'm actually injured. But now I, I, I saw back into the gym today. I'm starting to feel a bit better now. So uh, I don't know if I'll be 100%, but I'll definitely be up for it. And I'm sure. Before firepower we've got, we've got to have enough to beat Newcastle fans to you this time. There's no excuses, I feel like, for <laughs> some things. Nah, biggest blast. Yeah. Well, let's forget it anyway. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. We, we have to win. And, of course, we've got um, our our latest sign, I would say, 
to the to the All Stars ranks, the loaded All Star ranks, and it's uh it's Matty, Matty from the Magpie Channel is coming to join the team. Let's get him in. Welcome, Matty. Bonjourno, boys. How are we doing? Very well. Oh, Too bad. Well. Well. Um, no, it's it's great to have you on. Uh, uh, like as a team. Because we we are we are we're going to be a team on Friday, and it's it's always good to to chat about all things Newcastle United, which we will. But we'll also talk a little bit of tactics as well, and uh, hopefully we'll get the tactics board. That we'll get your your opinions on um, on on how we should be setting up on Friday. Because we asked the Geordie Journos, we asked Liam and and Dom, who were going to be joining us in the team as well yesterday, um, what their their preferences were. But it'd be interesting to get your thoughts on that uh, as well. But um, no, it's good. Now, Pete, good to have you. Don't, don't say too much because the enemy is in the house. Be careful Ooh. what you say. Yeah. Right? Just, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> nice, uh, yeah. Doing a... Yeah. Um, Bielsa, isn't it? Bielsa. Yeah. Oh, it? yeah. <laughs> I like it. Now, we'll be lurking somewhere. But no, hope, hope you're well, Johnny. And uh, yeah, we'll see you on Friday. But um, look, before we get to tactics, and I know, um, uh, Matt, Matty, I, I don't think we've got you for the full hour. We've got you for part of the show, I think. Um, so um, or what I do want to talk to from Newcastle United first before we come to tactics, sort of like part way through. And I've got a question. For you all um to start off it'll be interesting to get your responses to this um of course newcastle united have been talked about since january um we need we need to sell um we need to sell in order to revamp we need to sell in order to rebuild this newcastle united team we've been linked with bruno going he's that more recently we talked to the Jordi journals yesterday about that about all the recent links of arsenal um, there have been rumours about Sven Botman. Obviously, that's changed now because of his injury. Um, however, I just thought about this today and I thought, oh, I'll ask the boys this question. It's for all of you, really. So like, we'll work it round, Matty, all the way round to Daz. Um, and it's this. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Would you sacrifice Joe Linton to save Bruno this season? And the reason being is obviously with the contract talks, all the rest of it that was going on with Joe Linton, there's still no kind of resolution on that. Um, and there was even talks that we would have to sell um, if he doesn't sign a new deal. Um, and so my question to you, Matty, I'll come to you first. Would you sacrifice Joe Linton in order to save Bruno this summer? Ah, it's a it's a near impossible question, really, isn't it? Because mm. we've seen how much we're we're currently missing Joe Linton in the team, the, what he brings to us. But then again, Bruno's the next big thing, and he Bruno's the world class player. So if you had to choose between two of them, then I would I would say keep Bruno over Joe Linton. But uh, listen, hopefully he doesn't come with us. I've got faith. I, I think Joe Linton will sign a new contract. I think Bruno will stay for at least one more year. He will leave in the next two or three, I think. But I think this year. He'll um he'll stay. So I, I thankfully won't have to make that decision. But if I was put on a plate, yeah, I would I would say Bruno over Joe Linton. Like it's just as an all round player and as, as that world class piece of talent in the middle of the park. Who listen, Bruno could get in any side in the world. There's the reasons he's linked with Real Madrid, Paris Saint Germain. I don't think Joe Linton will get in a Real Madrid team. Put it that way. As much as we love him, so mm. Mm. keep Bruno. Interesting, Adam. Um, what what are your thoughts on that question, mate? Well, I do agree with Matty in the sense that obviously Bruno is a much better player. I also agree that he probably would get into any team in world football. But I think to try and spice things up, uh, the thing I have with Bruno that I would say is somewhat of a problem is the fact that he has a release clause in his contract, which means that quite literally any team can just come in and go, well, you know what, we're going to sign Bruno now. Whereas with Joe Linton, he's someone that I think is going to stay. He's probably someone you could, you could actually keep for the majority of his career. I don't think he's someone that, that's ever going to get I guess blindsided by a potential of a club coming in for me. So as much as I love Bruno, you got to look at the fact as well that on the FFP we need player sales. He's someone that's in terms of value, we're probably going to get the highest amount of value possible for a player. And, and secondly, um, I just, as I said before, he has he already has a release close. So I think eventually, if Bruno doesn't want to leave, someone will just come in and buy him anyway. So it's it's always a tricky one. Um, obviously, I think Bruno's a much better player than Joe Linton, but I think for the sake of Newcastle in the long term gain, I, I actually. I'm kind of a bit both ways about it. I, I love Jordan. I think he's someone that's class. Uh, he's someone that's came, came on leaps and bounces. He came in as a, an original striker. But 
Uh, it's tricky. It is tricky. It's a horrible question to ask. It's like picking like which kids you love the most. You know what I mean? Like he's on, you can't really pick that, can you? So it's a it's a tricky one. Uh, but I actually would be in the side of Joe Linton somewhat. Um, I, I, I rate him quite a bit, and I think Bruno's release cause is going to be a bit of a problem. Interesting, Josh. You got a different opinion. Um, obviously we, we've got fifty fifty split here. Matty's gone with Bruno. Adam's gone with Joe Linton. Where where are you sitting, fella? Do you know what? In the terms of, of course, we'll have to sell a buy and all that sort of stuff. I'm sick of going on about it now. But in all that sort of FFP sort of stuff, I am more leaning towards actually selling Bruno. It's not like I want to. I, I wouldn't, you know, ever say that out of my own will. I want them to stay here for the rest of my life. Of course I do. Uh, I think Bruno's by far the better player than Joel Lennon. Honestly, he's absolutely unbelievable in every aspect. Maybe apart from shooting, I mean, he's, he's okay at shooting. It's just not his best ability. Look, Bruno's phenomenal. But in terms of selling a buy, we're going to get a massive price tag for Bruno. He's one of the best there is about. Uh, of course, you don't get linked to Real Madrid and PSG if you're not a good player. Do you know what I mean? And there's that release clause worth £100 million or something like that. If we got that, that means we could bring in quite a bit of firepower. And actually, if you look at what centre mids right now, there's Bruno, Joe Linton, Tenali, Joe Willick, uh, Lewis Smiley there, Ellie Anderson. That's six pretty decent centre mids. Uh, of course, we've got the likes of Longstaff and, and some other young lads coming through. But... Um, I think the thing is with Joel Linton as well, of course, he's going out of contract soon. Uh, he's 27 years old. If we were to sell him, we wouldn't kind of get the biggest price tag. So we wouldn't have much to work with. Wayne's losing a very vital player because Joel Linton, honestly, I can't really find another player out there that can exactly sort of epitomise what Joel Linton does right now. He's got that sort of intensity and he's got that bully factor as well. Like genuinely, players are scared to go into a challenge against Joel Linton. So for right now, for the money aspect, I would rather kind of sacrifice Bruno than Joel Linton. I'm not saying he's uh, that Joel Linton's a better player. I just think with all the money sort of stuff and how it would benefit Newcastle more, I would be on more side of selling Bruno and uh, keeping Joel Linton. Interesting. Very interesting. Uh, we're getting a bit of a split here, which uh, I thought there might be at some point, which is why uh, it was always an interesting question. But Chris, um, who are you going for? You know, if you, are you are you sacrificing Joe Linton to save Bruno, or is it the other way around? What are your thoughts on that? I mean, it's a horrible question, really, isn't it? Because um, you know, no one no one wants to see Bruno go, but I, I do I do take all the lads' points actually. But I think I think I'll side with Josh on this one because I do um, I do it, it, technically and ability wise, Bruno Bruno's head and shoulders above Joe Litton, and I love Joe Litton, but Joe Litton provides something in this midfield that you know we haven't got, and it's not that easy to get. And I know you could say the same about uh, about Bruno, but. I just I feel like there's an inevitability that Bruno's going to leave. I don't want him to, but I think you know the vultures are circling already, and um, part of me is feeling like you know sometimes you've got to sacrifice players to to kind of move on. We've seen other clubs do it, and I, I probably sound like I'm repeating myself, but you know we saw West Ham with Declan Rice, um, you know Wayne Rooney with Everton. You see big players leave clubs, and then the club ends up you know investing and becoming a better squad as a whole. Um, yeah, it's a tough, it's a it's a tough one, but I think I think I wouldn't rather see Bruno go, but I think I think there's more chance of Bruno going if I'm honest, because also what what we haven't factored in is for for Joe Linton to leave, I think we command a fee of probably upwards of 50, 60 million, especially if he signs this new contract. And I'm not sure that other clubs would necessarily put 50, 60 million down on the table. Whereas for Bruno, if that release clause is there and it's believed to be anywhere between 75 and 100 million depending on what uh, media outlet that you need um you know you're getting nearly or more than double what we pay for them um and that that for me that's a big factor so i, I wouldn't want to see either go but i think i think bruno will go if you're asking me who i'd sacrifice i mean i'd rather sacrifice miggy and uh wilson if you if you if, if that was an option but yeah I, I i'm gonna i'm gonna go i'm gonna go with bruno because i think that he'll leave anyway that uh, that would be too easy, Chris. Too easy <laughs> if it was Miggy and, uh, and Wilson. Uh, Daz, I'll come to you um, on this. Uh, there is a split. Um, some going Bruno um, uh, to be sacrificed. What, what are your thoughts, mate? Well, this is a warning to you, Pete, because Adam is wrong. Josh is wrong. And Chris is wrong. The, Matty is correct. Uh, because uh, how can you get rid of Bruno? 
No, no I way. Gave, no, I, I love Joe Lynch. Some common sense in the house. Fuck yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was hearing. You know what, we'll keep, we'll, uh, keep but, uh, just, we'll keep the bloke that just wrestles everyone and we'll sell the, with the technically gifted world class player. Right? That sounds like a good idea. <laughs> you know, I wouldn't get anyone to be a scruffy, but I'll, I'll, be, I'll do a Jordan and you'll see it on Friday. Just get stuck in high elbows about. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I kind of do what Bruno does, though. Yeah, take notes, Johnny. <laughs> Bring it to the table. Uh, yeah, no, 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 no one wants to see Jordan to go. And I, I did, uh, I like, oh. all the, the reasons the lads all gave are, are all valid, but, uh, um, no, uh, I'm, I, that's that's the big my big fear this summer that we that we lose Bruno and I really don't want that to happen. No, I want us to keep Joe Linton as well. I want to, he deserves a decent contract from us. So uh, I, and I I don't I think we we will. I, I think it, this will be a non question, Pete. But what would you do, Pete? That is. The question. Ooh. Oh, Ooh. They, I, I'm asking the questions. I'm not answering them. Come on. Uh, no, Pete. Pete. What would you do? <laughs> no, 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 don't do that. Uh, um, it, honestly. Um, what what I'll say is that Bruno would be a lot harder to replace because of his technical ability. Um, I think you're having to you, you're going to have to pay a hell of a lot more to replace someone like him. Um, in comparison to a Joe Linton. Now, just case in point, just after last night, and I've not watched the whole game. Um, but um, Onana uh, played for Belgium. There's been a lot, a lot of people that watch the full game are raving about how good he is, saying, oh, it'd be brilliant coming in there, playing alongside um, Joe Linton, blah, blah, blah. His ability is an athlete, uh, big and strong. You know, he's not Joe Linton, but he could be close to as a replacement if Joe Linton was to leave. Um, and so there is a direct replacement there. There's probably others out there that we could talk about that could do a similar job. Um, I don't know too many people are out there that could do what Bruno Gomez does um, to his elite level. And I do think that if he was to... We've had a period of time with Joe Linton out the team and we've still picked up results. We've struggled, but we've still picked up results. I fear the hole that Bruno Gomez leaves if he was to leave the club. And that's what I worry about most. So I'm, if, I'm, if, I'm, if I'm being pushed on an answer, I'm saying I'm, I'm sacrificing Joe Linton. Um, that that's that's my opinion on it, but um, it, it's not an easy question. Um, I'm with Matty. I, I do think Joe Linton signs a new deal. Um, I, I think he I think he will stay at the club. Um, I'm a little bit more on the fence with regards to Bruno Gomez um, staying this summer. Um, I think teams will come in for him at some point, um, but um, you know it, that's the price you pay when you've got a release clause on on your head. Um, it's, it's just the reality of the situation. Uh, however, um, I've got one more question for you. Um, and again, this is for, there are some questions that are just directed at individuals, but this is another one around the table. And this is the one that I'll come to just before we go to tactics. Okay, because I want to talk those tactics with the boys. I know um, in about 10, 15 minutes or so, you might have to leave, Matty. So um, I do want to keep those tactics in place. Um, and look, it's just overall, um, you know, we know this season hasn't been the season we are, it was anticipated to be. Um, back in August, um, we've had Champions League. Um, we've got to two quarterfinals um, of cup competitions. Uh, we're still in the race for a European spot, although we're sitting in 10th at the moment. So my question to you boys is, and uh, look, um, look, Adam, we'll start with you and we'll go work our way around. So Adam, Josh and all the rest of it, um, we'll, we'll work around that way. Um, rate your NUFC season so far out of 10 and why? Well, that's quite tricky. It depends what kind of expectations you have going into this season because I... Mm. I think you had to take that into consideration, but uh, if the best way I think to probably answer this question is if you just take this season, not think about anything else that's happened last year or anything like that. If you just look at this season, just based on the season itself, when Newcastle went out in the quarterfinals of both the Carabao Cup and the FA Cup, well, OK, we'll finish last in the Champions League, but it's probably the best Champions League group stage you might see ever in the competition. Mm. And then on top of that, Premier League-wise, we're still in contention for Europe. Yes, it's going to heavily dictate where Newcastle will actually finish at the end of the season. But 
I think if people are going to be looking at this season with anger or anything like that, I think you're meant to. You've got to look at the fact that Tenardi's got a suspension. You've got to look at all the injuries we've had. I still think Newcastle has had a, a decent season. I don't think it's anything spectacular, but I, I wouldn't say it's bad either. So when it, when it comes to answering that question, it's hard because we've had uh, the best way I, I would kind of look with it is the fact that Newcastle has had all these highs this season. We beat Son in a derby. We smashed PSG in the Champions League. We've got a a massive win over Man U at Old Trafford. And then at the same time, you look at the, the horrible penalty the few out of Chelsea and all, all the lows as well. So it's it's a tricky one. Um, mm. It does depend on where we finish, but I'm probably looking at around, around a 7 out of 10. I think it's been a good season, but uh, definitely one I think we've probably missed opportunities at times or was a bit depressed at times. But it is what it is. Um, I, I think it's been... Above average, decent season. I think seven's fair. Um, it, some people might think differently, but I don't think it's been a bad season whatsoever. It's just been a, a case of either bad luck or just at times a bit poor from us. Yeah, sometimes it can be it can be uh, skewed a little bit by um, social media and and reactions to results and various other things. Um, but Josh, um, your, your rating this season so far? Still got ten games to go. But so far, how are you seeing this season uh, and how it's panned out, mate? I think that question's pretty hard to answer, you know, because you could look at it so many different ways. I know Adam said not look at it this way, but imagine you were a, a Newcastle fan, for example. You've watched one season of Newcastle in your life, and that was last season. Champions League football, absolutely bossed the Premier League, fourth place, Carabao Cup final. We're done fantastic. And you just, you don't know anything what's going on the next season. You just look on paper, bottom of the Champions League group, two quarter finals. 10th in the Premier League. It doesn't look very good on paper, but I think you genuinely, you do have to take everything into context. I don't want to go on about it and feel sorry for ourselves, but getting robbed in Paris, uh, not having any striker at Dortmund away, Tonali yeah. getting suspended, all these injuries, all that sort of, like, genuinely, you, you actually cannot rate that bad look. That is, uh, it's unbelievable what's happened this season. So when you take everything actually into context and how hard done by we've been, even though I, I hate saying that sort of stuff, but... um. It has been a pretty decent season. Just experiencing the Champions League in itself, look, we were actually very, very close to getting out of that group. That was so tight for a group. We never even probably, well, I personally didn't give uh, ourselves that much of a chance. We battered PSG. We done okay, uh, Milan away, but the rest of it, it wasn't too great. But beat Sunderland as well. Honestly, yeah. I think just for experience in the Champions League and from a fan perspective, going to the likes of the San Siro, that was unbelievable. I'll never forget that. Of course, smashing Sunderland. If, if we get Europe this season, I'll probably rate it a little bit higher. But as of right now, I am in agreement with Adam and I will say a 7 out of 10. It's not went as we have, would have liked, but before the season even started, I said I would have liked Conference League. So with everything in the context, it's not too bad. But yet again, it could have definitely been a lot better. Matty, uh, Josh has just talked on it there. You know, the fact that we won the derby. Uh, in the FA Cup, you know, massive. We haven't, we haven't played a derby for, you know, seven odd years. Um, Champions League, Paris, PSG at home. Uh, we saw your picture when we announced the the, the new signing with you doing the Mbappe uh, after that game. Uh, you know, we, we've had we've had some good moments this season. Uh, are, are you are you with the boys around seven, or are you giving it a different perspective on that? What what are your thoughts, mate? Uh, I'm gonna go. I'll go for a six out of ten at the moment. It'll be seven. If we do get European football, and um, I wouldn't, it could be a six or a seven out of ten to be fair. On one hand, some of the best memories of my life sport Newcastle this season. We've talked about traveling to the European games, we've talked about winning the derby. Uh, Adam mentioned you know the, the Carabao Cup win with our C team at Old Trafford, that was unreal. The amount of times I've been to Old Trafford and haven't even seen we get out, get out our half. Do you know what I mean? So, there has been some amazing memories, some class moments. Obviously, there's been a lot of downs as well um, off the back of the highs of last year. But this injury crisis is absolutely ridiculous. The Tonali situation, everything else put together, it's still been a really good season, hasn't it? Let's be honest. And where we are now, I think how people are getting upset or putting pressure on Eddie Howe is, is mental because to still be in with a chance of finishing seventh, sixth is probably a push now, but seventh and get Europa League. After the season we've had, after all the games, all the injuries, everything else is still... Unbelievable. If you're asking me, I, th I still think we're, we're having a good season and it, it could get a lot better. But I'll tell you what, Saturday is a massive game to say that. Like, it is. It's an absolutely massive game. Um, and we'll be there. We'll be there. The uh, loaded boys will be in the house. So, Chris, um, what, what are you rating it, mate? 
Well, I'm scared of getting thrown off the screen again, so I'm going to agree with Matty. No, I'm only joking. I, I do, I do actually agree with Matty. Uh, I, I agree to six for me. Um, I do again. I take on board what the boys have said. You know, when when we look back, uh, you know, at the end of the season when we look back on the season, you know, massive Champions League campaign uh, where we were so so close to progressing, whether that be you know in the Europa League or even in the Champions League. Um, so you know, we'll look back on that. I think and think you know what we we done ourselves proud there. We certainly weren't disgraced. Um, as Adam said, quarterfinal FA Cup, quarterfinal League Cup. Um, certainly no shame in that. I just, I just wish that we'd finished higher up. But then, you know, you can start getting into the mitigating factors. You know, the injuries, obviously the suspension to Sandro Tonali. Things would have looked a hell of a lot different. But I think, um, I think at this present moment in time, as we're sitting, sitting where we are in the league, I would say six, uh, six out of ten. Um, but there is there is an opportunity for that to increase. But similarly, there is an opportunity for it to decrease as well if we slip further down than tenth. Which fingers crossed we won't. Ah, interesting. Um, there's a couple of sevens, a couple of sixes in there. Daz, where are you going? No, no, oh, no, no point fives. Sorry, no point fives. We're not doing these matches. Oh no, 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 I know. I don't worry. I'm not going there. That was last season. Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, actually, you know, I, I started on a four, but listening to the lads' arguments, I brought it up to a five. And now, credit to them in, in the Champions League, we're very unlucky to get out, not to get out of the group, and we had a good uh, League Cup run um, for a while as well. But just just as a as a whole, um, it's the, the injuries, the suspension to Nally and, and everything the lads mentioned as well. But I'm not throwing anyone under the bus for that. I'm not, I'm not blaming. I, I'm all in for, still on Eddie Howe into next season and, and at least till 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 Christmas. Then maybe uh, they might need, need to, to make a decision. But uh, um, but yeah, I'm gonna, I I don't I want to set the bar high so that they can progress on that next season again because uh, I'm expecting a big season from from uh, the next season with. With not as many injuries and, and a good summer uh, to build on uh, the project, so uh, uh, um, yeah, I'm going to go five. All right, interesting. Um, I'm going to go with you, Daz. I'm going to go five, um, and I'm saying there's a potential for it to be an eight. Because I tell you what, if we get European football out of this season with all the injuries, with all the nightmare situations that we've been in it's an eight for me because I'm not expecting Europe at all at this very moment with the recent injuries with Sven Botman and Lewis Miley, my hopes of Europe have kind of gone. Um, and I never thought I'd say that, you know, even as far back as January, December time. Um, but yeah, uh, I, I would definitely say five at the moment, potentially going up to an eight if we get Europe. Um, and let's hope that we do. Um, right. What I'm going to now is bring up the tactics board and the reason being is because we have a game um coming up on friday we play newcastle fans tv the boys are going to be there um helping us out and hopefully winning the match for us um and we've got the tactics up here and uh this might have to be the tactic in order to win the game. <laughs> formation <laughs> uh all of us this is the start this is the this is the formation but in in reality um look We've got, we've got our squad here, and the question I've got, um, and Matty, I'll come to you first. Um, you know, where, where do you six aside? Where do you, where you want to play? Where, where do you, you want to affect the game? I'm straight or all day long, mate. Goal poacher. Yeah, yeah legs are gone. Pretty much <laughs> cool. good job. There'll be no offsides in this one because I'll be like fucking Papi CC. So up top, <laughs> right? That's all I'm doing. There for the tappings. Yeah. On the edge of the shoulder, the defender <laughs> running in, finishing. That's where I'm at. Love it, love it. Uh, uh good stuff. Well, we know where where you're playing. Uh, Josh, will come to you. Um, where where where's your position? Where do you, where do you want to play, or where where can you play? Do you know what, lads? I'll do a shifted centre back, but I'm telling you now, I'm a centre mid. I'm not a centre back. <laughs> I got put there the last game, right? And I was absolutely knackered. I was getting up the top of the pitch and I was getting straight back to centre back. Honestly, my defensive uh, work rate is unbelievable. But uh, I centre mid, I'll, I'll be okay, lads. But if I do need a drop back, trust us, I will for the team. Right foot, left foot, right side, left side. Ooh, do you know what it is? You, you pick, lads. I'll let you be the man in charge. I'll go any side. Okay, well, we'll stick you on the right for now. I'm assuming you're right footed. I am, yeah, I am, but okay. I can curl on with the right on the left hand side, so it's a oh. it's a it's either side, you know what I mean? <laughs> okay, uh, um, Adam, 
I'm quite something like Matty actually. I like being up when I like when the ball comes to me. I'm someone that um, I, try, I don't know what straight I compare myself to, but I'm a bit similar in the sense that I'm not going to do a ridiculous amount of running. I'm someone that likes the ball coming to me, and I want to get the ball, just try and get it as far forward as I can. But um, I've, I've had the, the fortunate luck of actually playing with pretty much everyone in that team there, so I, I know well enough how people play. And I, I remember Jordan and Liam last time, to be fair. Like, those two are quite a good combination, um, yeah. in the point of view. They're quite good. So, um, I'll play wherever, to be honest, but um, I do prefer playing in a more attacking role, just like being in the end of the ball. Okay, uh, so I'll, I'll put you guys as, as potential striker, striking options. Um, Chris, uh, uh, I think we said sort of at the back midfield for you, kind of mixed between the two, is that right? Yeah, I think that's probably right, mate. I like, I like to try and dictate the play where possible, and like, I like to see the action. So like, I used to, used to play up front when I was younger, but I, I haven't really got the legs for that anymore, sadly. Um, and then I progressively moved back, further back. So then I was centre mid, then I was like defensive mid. And now, do you know what, Pete, for me, and we've spoke about this, haven't we? It's just, it's just about keeping them goals out. I'm just happy to give it to the young lads, ping it up, let them do the business up the other end and just make sure that we keep it nice and tight at the back. Um, using the experienced heads, that, that's this the is it, mate. This um, is it. That's, um, and any particular position for you? That, that you want to play? Yeah, I don't really mind. Um, um, I'm, go I'm going to say though, uh, I, I, I could be the Isaac to uh, Callum Wilson and Chris Wood there uh, <laughs> in the mix as well. But uh, yeah, look, it, it doesn't matter. I think there'll be a lot of rotation. And as, as Chris, you said at the start of the show, uh, given 110% for the 10 minutes, then swap off and uh, <laughs> let someone else do the same, and uh, that'll be rotating. And we'll, uh, yeah. we, we, we didn't have that many subs last season, uh, to, to do that. Uh, so, uh, we, we'll, uh, we learned from that this season. They out subbed us last time, definitely. And um, they used their subs really well, which ended up winning the game. Uh, boys, we've, we've got kind of a, a 2 2 1 formation, is that you know. It, is that the formation you're going for, or, or are we doing a are we doing a three one one? Um, what, what what anyone got any thoughts on that potential um, setup? Go for any formation, lads. Honestly, I'm confident. I'm confident in our ability here, lads. I would say <laughs> the uh, the subs are definitely definitely key of the subs, eh? Because oh, yes. where we went wrong in the charity game last weekend was that we had. What do we have? One or two subs in our team, and I think they were both 50 years old. So that's <laughs> <laughs> really helped. Like, so I mean, we had Steve and that going on. They were doing well, but bloody hell. Do you know what I mean? Like, I was knackered. Everyone was knackered after about five minutes. There was knee, there was knee breaks, really. So the subs are, are going to be vital yeah. on Friday. I'm yeah. telling you, we're going to have to make sure we're rolling them on and off. Yeah. Well, don't worry, Matty. We will. <laughs> Yeah, hundred percent. So okay, so we've got the we've got the kind of the setup. Um, potentially a, a, a two two, a two two one. Uh, we've definitely got some options there. You got uh, potentially me, Chris, Liam, uh, defensive options. Dom tends to play, or I think he started on the left hand side because uh, he can cut in as well. Josh, you said you can do the same. Uh, Jordan's very very similar, can play the side. So we've got options there, and then we've got options up top. So I think we're. Uh, I think we're pretty set, boys. But um, question I've got for you and Matty, I know you've got to go in, in just a second, but uh, who's going to be the first scorer? <laughs> who's scoring the first goal? Is I'm, backing gonna... I'm backing myself. I was disappointed I didn't <laughs> score the other day. Yeah. I've been taking this one seriously now. Like I've been scrambling the mini eggs the day. I've been sitting down doing now. So I'm getting perfect preparation. Do you know what I mean? I'm, I'm, ready, for, I'm ready for Friday. Like, Back in it. Um, just, just to be clear, I think we talked about it last night, boys, didn't we? We said first goal scorer. We're, 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 we're doing pylons. I'll be a sub. <laughs> I want to score first. <laughs> pylons for first goal scorer. Pylons for winning goal. Um, that's how. That's how. It's, it's got to be that for sure. Last minute um, when I would be unreal, wouldn't it, lads? Oh, <laughs> and, and there's a ref this year. You're yeah, there is. Yeah, yeah, really? uh, yeah. Apparently, we've got we've actually got um, a, a ref a ref coming in to 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 kind of control the game, and, or, although it was played in really good, really good spirit uh, last time. But yeah, um, and we are doing a, we are doing six aside, are we? Is yeah, that yeah. What we're doing? yeah, 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 six aside. Our blue flames, yeah. 
Is that um, what it is? No, Forest Hall. Forest Hall. Yeah. Right, that makes sense. And because I thought someone t- they said to me, Blue Flames, and I went on the website and I was like, there's absolutely no six or eight pictures of Blue Flames. No, like, no, like, no, someone's no. winding me up. Yeah, trapping no, me into no. an 11 to <laughs> game or something. Definitely not. <laughs> I, I think I've sent you the details uh, already, but I'll send them to you again. But uh, nice yeah, try. three o'clock kickoff. Don't be late, boys. We need a warm up as well. Uh, Definitely, I'll be there from fucking nine in the morning. Me. <laughs> Get the best seats. <laughs> the mini eggs. We'll yeah. With the mini eggs. And yeah. the we, we, we don't need the tactics board on the day because we've we've just done it. We, we know roughly where people are going to yeah. play. Pete, so. what happens when you click that click click that three D button? What happens then? Uh, oh, let me go back. Oh, um, that's if you know when I on shows when I recreate the goals. Um, ah, sorry. Oh. It, you can actually you can actually watch it back in three D. Um, Maybe we can we can do that next week, mate. We'll have to, yeah, we'll have to, yeah, we'll go. Have to set it up so we can show, yeah. show the replay of the High goal. Yeah, goal. Don't keep it busy. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I am. Uh, I, I may be jumping the gun here, but um, there are rumours that the game might well be streamed live um, oh, on the day. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, uh, people could be watching all the good stuff. Uh, Sky Sports. Live, live and in living colour. Uh, yeah, yeah, our own version of Sky Sports. So uh, yeah, uh, make sure you get celebrations ready, boys, because uh, people people are going to want to see that. That's for sure. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, but all good stuff there. Um, and yet, yeah, if, if if we've got it recorded, we can recreate the goals. That's for sure. Um, but no, <laughs> looking forward to that, boys. Uh, Matty, uh, have you got a, have you got a shoot now? Do another few minutes, mate. If you want, if you want to rattle off another couple of your fucking really complex hard questions to answer. <laughs> <laughs> he loves them. He loves them. It's not fucking impossible I'm answers, oh yeah. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm, not gonna, I'm not letting anyone get away with it easy. Okay. I'll be in the, I'll be in the press conference tomorrow, are you, mate? Should be in the press <laughs> tomorrow. I'm, I'm, I'm going. going. That's it. That's it. That's, that's, that's where we're going. going. Um, um, the question I've got, okay. Um... Easy one. Who starts against West Ham on Saturday? And I and I'm going to give you the names, okay? So, or, or be more specific, the positions, okay? So, starting at left back, have we got Dan Byrne starting? Nope. Is it going to be the resurgence of Lewis Hall? I think he got a couple of assists for under twenties whilst away. Um, played really well again. Um, had a good cameo against Man City, or as it's been rumoured, um, the resurgence of, uh, and now fit again, Matt Target at left-back. If, and I'll go around the houses again, if you had the choice, who were you starting at left-back out of those three, as well as that? Who's starting in midfield? Is it this man? Or is it this man? So you've got two questions to answer on that again round the table matty go for it who are you going for i'd start hall and anderson but i guarantee now it's going to be being a long stuff <laughs> so I, I would i would play hall all day long uh love to see him i thought you know he was the one bright spark at the end he had a couple of weeks oh. ago um mm. long stuff he's been playing with injections he's been playing crap so why not give anderson a chance but uh, if it's anything to go by what we know from eddie how it's uh be good old Burn and Longstaff. Mm. I'll throw another one in there uh, for you boys to consider as well. Um, who's starting right wing? Murphy mm. or Miguel Almeiro? Oh, that's a tough one to be fair on that one. Because Murphy got given a chance last couple of games. He didn't... Sometimes like his quick ball, you know, when he just gets it and whips it in, that's, that's an advantage to when Miggy just runs and goes out for a throw in. So, um... <laughs> I might go Miggy though. I might go Miggy. To be honest with you, I don't know why. I'm just feeling. I'm just feeling Miggy. Do a goal, any? I'll, I'll back Miggy. Okay. Do a goal last season. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In comparison to last season, for sure. Uh, yeah. Adam, um, who left back, centre mid, right wing? Who are your starting um, players against West Ham? Oh, me. I mean, trying to pick a left back while having to you know, uh, it's like picking which. Which shit play you want to put in? Like, I can't stand it. But obviously, Lewis Hall is quite young. He'll become good. Uh, Target's someone I did actually like a decent amount. But obviously, it would be his first proper game back. So, you know, we'll put loads of pressure on him. I think you'll start Burn, even though I massively disagree with it. 
Um, I think you'll also start a long stuff. I agree with Matty. I think you'll play the exact same two players. And I, I, I would play Anderson myself. So I'll probably go um, I'll probably go target Anderson for the uh, West Ham game and then Miggy. And I'll probably go take around for the Everton game on the Tuesday. So you got to take into account that second game as well. But uh, you know for a fact he's just going to start burn long stuff. There's no, there's no point even asking this question, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> um, right wing um, I would start Miggy over Murphy I think against West Ham that bit of pace you get from him, I think would be quite handy but again I think I love him you just got to hope to turn up really because the, the, the ball can be good and the ball be shit so you've got to depend on what, what the feeling on the day okay um, Josh I'll come to you on, on this one um, are you were the same with uh, Matty and Adam um, I'm the same with them uh, in agreeing to Eddie Howe will start burning long stuff, although that's not my choice. For so many reasons, I mean, the both of them haven't just been performing the best, but my exact players would be for left back. I'm I'm kind of in a in a tussle. Yeah, I don't know whether I choose Matthew Target because if he was fully fit, I probably would say Target, but it might, you know, he might not be up to full fitness. We don't know the sort of medical stuff, chucking him back in his first full game. Uh, but Lewis Hall, like Matty said, he was genuinely like the, the only spark in that team. Uh we had, yeah, he had it was just like a, a little just bundle of, of some I don't know, some sort of energeticness that we're we were kind of missing in that team. He injected some sort of life, and uh, Eddie Howe also said he wasn't uh, impressed with them. For his defensive work as well, because he recently said he, he wasn't or something like that. But as much as I want Lewis Hall to get some sort of game time there, I would like to give Target a chance, uh, even though he might not be back to full fitness. If he's not and it comes out that he's not, I would put Lewis Hall there. Uh, in midfield, it's an old brain after me. I don't even need to really explain it. It's Elliot Anderson every day of the week. He hasn't really had a chance and. I think it's quite a shame as well because in a season where we've had so many midfield absences, it could have kind of been Ellie Anderson's breakout season. But um, I've not been his biggest fan. But recently, I think he's like kind of on the same page. I'm not saying he's as good as these players, by the way. I do believe these both players uh, are better than Ellie Anderson. But he's kind. He kind of does the same job as Joel Willock and Joel Linton. But. He would be there for me, 110%. I really like Elliot Anson. Use his body very well. And for right wing, uh, it would be Miggy for me. I'm not his biggest fan whatsoever. I do kind of like Jacob Murphy. Uh, someone said he, I forgot exactly who said it, but uh, he does have a very good cross on him sometimes. But uh, I, it would be Miggy for me. I mean, he's got the pace against Emerson, but fingers crossed he can actually do something instead of just using his pace. Oh, definitely. Um, Daz, Chris, I'm going to come with a different question for you. And I think Toon Gamers put it in there as well. Because there is still a question on Saturday is who plays right back? Um, is it yeah. Kieran Trippier or is it Tino Livermento? And this is the reason why I specifically left Tino Livermento out of the left back options is because I, I, I do see him as a right back and he's going to be playing there long term. So if you had the choice, and this is for me where it gets difficult, um, who are you going for, Chris? Um, yeah, it's a tough on this one. Um, I'm, I'm thinking of who we'd be up against, which will probably be Kudus. Um, very, very pacey winger. Um, mm. Cuts in from the left, really, really dangerous. I mean, you know, man for man, you'd put, you'd probably say uh, Tino, but again, we do, we do, um, you know, we do need the experience of Kevin Trippier. Yeah, I mean, the nice thing is on this right hand side, like I'm happy with either, if I'm being honest. Um, so that it's, it's a nice problem to have on that right hand side. Um, so I, I'd probably say Tino. Um, but if Tri if Trippy is starting, obviously I would be equally happy with that. Nah, interesting. Uh, Daz, um, are you the same? Are you going Tino, or have you got an alternative option? As Chris said, would be I'm, I'm sure I'm I'm sure we'd be happy with either. But yeah, yeah, we we would. But Tino has to be on the pitch. Uh, Tino is is been probably going to be my player of the season. I th I'd say uh, the the way it's panned out. Um, or at least highlight of the season, uh, him, his emergence. Um, so he has to be on the pitch. So linking back to your other question, uh, if if Trippy is, is is fit, I think he's, he's going to play Trippier. But then I'd ha have to have Trippier at left back. But then I, I know Eddie Taha was thinking, and Paqueta is good, good, always ups his game against us because he's playing against Bruno, and he likes to get his head on things. Remember the score against um, with the corner as well. So he'll want the height. So that's why I think he will play Byrne. So... I think we, we, we may see either or, um, either trips or Tino. But if it was me, I pick I pick Tino. But I think it'd help pick uh, trips. 
I, I, I'm not going to lie. I, I'd like a, I'd like a Tino right back, Trippier left back. That would be perfect. Uh, <laughs> played them both and just kind of discarded all the left backs, which pretty much tells its own story. Um, if I'm honest, um, I've got one. I've got another question for you before we, we we can come to some questions from people in the chat because I know some people have put questions in the chat as well. Um, um, are you are you okay to stay around for this one, Matty? Let's do this one, mate, and then I've got to go and do some kick you up some practice for Friday. So, Good man. <laughs> Good man. Ded- dedicated to the cause. This is what I like. Uh, um, we've talked about Isaac Bruno as those players that could leave. We've talked about that before. Um, but in your opinion, who are our, who are our? I need to get my spelling right. Valuable assets to be sold this summer. Well, the obvious one is Bruno, in it with that with that release clause, with everyone sniffing around him, he's going to be the the one that's highest in demand. Um, you would have maybe put Sven Botman in that link before his spell that he's had the last few months, and obviously he's injury now. So he, the one positive of that is he's he's going to remain and hopefully come back mm-hmm. stronger and we'll see the best of him like we did last year. Um, I think the, we don't really have many apart from Bruno and Alexander Isak, do we? I think obviously Anthony Gordon, if he went to the Euros and did well. That would reignite a lot of interest from other teams that looked at him previously. Remember, Chelsea bidded fifty million for him, didn't they, a couple of years ago? Well, out of nowhere before, and then Everton were like now try to push them for more. So there's plenty of teams that could come back in for the likes of an Anthony Gordon, a Tino Livermento, but I think they're too soon. I think people want to be a bit more of a sample size on those, a bit more of a couple of years in the making. Uh, you'd, you'd make it an offer for one of those. So they're literally the ones we're going to have difficulty holding on to this year, this summer is going to be Isaac and Bruno. And there's nothing stopping teams coming in and paying 80, 90, 100 million for Isaac and then obviously hitting Bruno's 100 million release clause. It could definitely happen. I think Newcastle would accept if that happened, to be honest with you, because they've obviously they're not going to affect FFP or then allowing to spend towards 300 million for a sale of, of Bruno for 100 million. So, aye, those are the sellable assets, mate, because to be honest, apart from that, there's not, that many of them because you look around this squad. I mean, other players, how much are you going to get for a for a Sean Longstaff for a Miguel Almiron? You know, you you're not going to get much. Yeah, it's an interesting one. Um, would you do you think Callum Wilson's a sellable asset? I think he will be sold. Yeah, I think Callum Wilson's time is up in Newcastle, and he will go in the summer. For me, we should have let him go in January, and I know he wasn't happy about that. He he, he would have liked that move to let go Madrid. And obviously, look how it played out. Shock, he gets injured and then we'll, we'll miss him. So, for me, it's it's too many games missed for Callum Wilson. Unless he was happy to remain and, and be a third try striker um, and get someone else into battle with Isaac and, and give Wilson the luxury of 20 minutes here, half an hour there, starting cup games, whatever. But I don't think he's going to want that. He's he's still on the verge of an England side. He still probably feels he's got a lot of offer. So, if you give him a chance to move to Madrid, yeah, I think he'd snap your hands off. And obviously, there's been talks that he's been it. He's been in discussions with teams in Spain, in Germany, even Saudi Arabia. There could be one big paycheck left for him. So I think Wilson will go with me, but I don't think we'll get a huge amount for him, to be honest with you. Uh, interesting. Very interesting. We'll go around the houses, but if, if you need to go, Matty, um, you head off. It's been an absolute pleasure to have you on, mate. Um, nice one, boys. See you on Thank Friday. You, boys. I'll see you on Friday, eh? Hey, right. Matty, we'll see, see you later. See you later. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> Good man. Um, Adam, I'll come to you. Like, who do you think would be our sellable assets to be sold this summer in order to raise, you know, profit sustainability, being able to buy more players potentially? Who do you think the, those sellable assets will be, mate? Well, if you were to ask me, I guess Newcastle's best approach and how you would want to have my window, sell some players in order to have that money mm. to sell elsewhere. I think you've got to kind of sell your mid-range players. I think if you're going to get rid of a guy like a Bruno on this side on Bop and a, a Jordan, that, that's when you're going to have some issues. But the likes of Wilson, as Matty said before, I think we've had a huge missed opportunity not selling in Jamba. He had a bit of interest for him. I think the fact he's been injured again is a consistent theme now. And I think we've got to lose value on him because of that. I think not selling that Jamba window is going to affect us value-wise. I don't think we'll get as much money for him. Uh, Almoron was an interesting one because the Saudi Arabia team had came for a decent amount of money as well for him. He probably would have snapped your hands off her, but the player said he wanted to stay at Newcastle. And I think, let's say, 
we get taught now 20 to 25 million pounds for Miggy on. Would you put your put your hand up? You think you should be sore? I think everyone probably would put their hand up straight away. I think if you look at sort of money, he's someone that he can see. He can some seven. So I think the likes of Wilson, Miggy, maybe if a decent offer comes in for the likes of Shaw Longstaff. But the problem also being is that who's going to want these players? I mean, we don't want them in a couple of years' time. Who's going to want to actually buy them and bring them into their team? So it's so tricky because the only players you can sell for a good amount of money and teams also want to buy or the players that we want to keep so um it's it's always a it's always a tricky avenue to go down i think our most sellable assets are the players that you're desperate to keep hold of so unless you don't mind getting with the likes of callum wilson sean longstaff maybe as much as i don't want to see it a guy like you and trip yeah you still got a, a good amount of value there for being in these uh, middle 30s now so it's tricky. Uh, it's tricky. And I think Newcastle have got to think about it very carefully in this window. I feel like this is the window once you hit the end of the season. I think this next window is going to heavily dictate where the club's going to go over the next couple of years. So we'll see what happens. I'm confident that we'll make the right choices. But um, in terms of starting players, it is so hard, to be honest, because I think we've got a lot of players we need to get rid of. But they just the problem is who's going to want them? Definitely. Um, and that was the question I was going to come to Josh with, actually. You just touched on it, Adam. Um, you know, does Kieran Trippier stay at Newcastle United this summer, Josh? I think it's a hard one to answer, mate, because he's definitely one of Eddie Howe's favourites. I mean, look, Kieran Trippier, I know he had that rough patch, but he's been one of the best signings this club's ever made, not just because of what we're getting him uh, off the pitch, of course, when all that sort of behind the, the sort of scenes, the leadership, uh, kind of growing Tino Livermento up uh, and all that sort of stuff. I mean, his quality on the pitch is absolutely fantastic. His leadership, he's crossing. Um, Absolutely everything. He is seriously fantastic, but he is getting to a quite an old age right now. Of course, we knew that Bayern Munich came in. Thomas Tuchel kind of wanted an emergency right back. They didn't want a, a, a older right back, but they, they were in a very sort of desperate situation there. I, I, I don't know because he is getting pretty old and I don't know what teams are going to want an, an elderly player. I know he's not exactly elderly, but a player of that age bracket. Um, if he's elderly, so, I don't know why. Yeah. Oh, Jesus <laughs> Christ, man. <laughs> you know what I mean, though? Like, of that age bracket, there's not many teams that are going to want a player like that. Most teams' models right now are wanting young players and bringing them up. So, it is a very hard one. It, it's kind of one of them. Will he go and will get a, a sort of fixed price tag right now and get that money right now or will he sort of retire and become a coach and all that sort of stuff in my opinion I believe he will stay here he's got that benefit with Tino Livermento he's going to give him so much experience and of course I think he does have one more season left in him look if in my opinion I actually would start Tino at right back next season but I think he would stick around yeah for all of the benefits behind the scenes uh, next season so I do believe he will stay lads yes interesting two gamer Coming up with the great questions, that I, it was the question I had for Chris. He's, he's, um, True Gamer is, is, is the man for questions. He, yeah, is, he, he, is. he said that yesterday. Yeah, questions, um, and, and this was the question I had specifically for you, Chris, is that could you see Joe Willock being a valuable asset that is sacrificed to help build the team in the summer? 100%. Um and the reason I say that isn't because, again, it's another, I don't want to see Joe Willett go. But there's only there's only two or three players, and the boys have already mentioned them, who I would be really unwilling to let go. Maybe you could say four, and that, you know, obviously is Isaac, Bruno. I really don't want to see Isaac, Bruno, Gordon or Livermento go. I think Daz mentioned that last night as well. Like the key four who I just wouldn't want to see go. Um, and with Joe Willock, I, Joe Willock provides something to that midfield that we haven't got at this present moment, and that's legs. You know, he can carry us up the field. He's really, he's really, he's got a great engine on him. He takes us for 20, 30 yards up the pitch very, very quickly. Um, so again, I don't want to see Joe Willock go. But let's be honest, lads. If if someone comes in and goes slaps 30, 35 million down and says I want to buy Joe Willock, I, I I think the club would listen. I really, really do. Um, <laughs> If the right money comes on the table for the for you know the right deal, I think I think the club will listen to it. And um, there's only certain players that I think they would be very very reluctant to do that with. But I, I, I genuinely think, and I think it'll be the case for a lot of clubs uh, this summer. If if you know cold hard cash is put on the table, the clubs will listen because it just it just opens up so many opportunities in order for you to invest elsewhere in your squad. And we're in that 
we're in that funny position, aren't we? In that we we've got we've got loads of money to spend, but we've still got to stay within the parameters of the rules. Um, some clubs aren't in aren't in that fortunate position. Um, we are, but we've still got to abide by the rules. But if we if we can shift two or three 20 plus million players, it's gonna it's gonna open some big doors for us. And like I say, I, I for me, there's only three or four players who aren't on the table in terms of who they'd want to sell. Uh, so therefore, yeah, I think Joe Wilk is a possibility. Definitely. It, very, very interesting. Um the last one for you, Daz. Fabian Scher. Oh. Is he a sacrifice that you'd make? No, it's, it's not worth it. No way. Hey, look, we bought him for four million. Uh I don't I can't see a, a massive offer coming in from him because of his age. Uh and where, where's our backup then? So no. Um but uh, you know, I, I just looked, brought up the squad game and, and you, the, your original question, and Paul Dunn is gone. Uh, Dubrovka, we wouldn't get much for a free solo. Wilson, we get a small bit, not much. Matt Richard would be gone as well. Matt Target, it would be hard to offload him with his 100k a week. Um, Larry, uh, Carries is, is going to be um, going as well. His contract will be up. Miggy, Miggy will we, we'll get a, a decent offer for him. You imagine either uh, Saudi or back to the States again. Gillespie, say no more. Uh, Sean Longstaff is also someone we put in, in the mix as well in, in our good luck category for squad game. Uh, we, we'd, if we got a right a good offer and it would uh, make a nice uh, dent towards uh, PSR. Uh, Ryan Fraser, who's doing well in Southampton, we might get a, a bit of a deal there for him, at least recoup some money. I know we got him on a free transfer. Hayden, just have to get him off the books. Uh, Henrik, forget about it, and Jamal Lewis, who's doing okay for Watford, we might get something back, but not, no, not no. nowhere near the amount we paid. Yeah. That, no. that's it. it'd, be, it'd be interesting to see the value of what Shaw is now, because he's got to be more than four million, even at thirty-two. Like, yeah. Surely he's yeah. worth more than four million. So yeah. Yeah, the, the, there'd be a value there. I'd maybe be inclined to say it'd be similar to what um, Bayern Munich came in for trips in January. I think they came in between 12 and 15 um, around that. I, I, I would I would say Shaw is, is around that. And look, none of us, I don't think, want Shaw to leave. But just looking at the values within the squad, and the reason why I'm, reason why I'm asking this question to all of you boys is because, for me, I, I do see that we don't necessarily have to sell one of our big players and we can find value elsewhere in the squad. They might not be to the value of a, of a hundred million, but if we could get, say, you know, if we could sell three, four players um, or, or maybe even two or three players and get, say, 30, 40 million for those two or three players, all of the players that you mentioned, Daz, can potentially go out on, on freeze or low fees and they're already... You're recouping a significant amount of money, maybe not the hundred million, but certainly enough to be able to do business in the summer. And you're still keeping your elite players and being able to add to it. So, it, it, it's an interesting one. Um, and look, we're going to talk about it a hell of a lot more in loaded. Um, sorry, I just laughed at this this one from Bobby because uh, does he fit Jose's uh, game plan for ne for us next season though? Well, um, that would be the that would be the multi million pound question in the summer um first of all uh, we will we'll need some form of confirmation that that eddie house staying apparently there's going to be some sort of summit where they assess the season um after the season's finished yeah. i think at that point it, it needs to happen but but for me if 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 nothing's happened by the end of june eddie house staying because they've got a pre-season to prepare for. You've got the Euros, which is a massive disruption. There's no way they're going to want a change of manager after June. Like, they're going to want to be able to, like, put their plan together from the beginning of July when everyone comes back for pre-season. But I, I still think Eddie Howe will be uh, manager next season, personally. Um, but that's just me. Um, Daz, are there any questions for the boys before we, um, before we wrap up? Yes, there are. Um, now, uh, I had to fly through them because we were playing catch up with the board. I didn't want to block uh, people who were putting up the comments. But I want to say, F Ferdinand, mm. uh, he's, he's dialing in from uh, Ghana. So thanks for joining the show, Ferdinand. Great, um, Ian asked the question, who is the manager of our team? 
Mm. We're rotating manager as well. That's what we were talking about uh, yesterday. So. Yeah, there's no one manager, is there? We're just we're all going to take charge. No, the only time we're not going to have a manager is, um, I think, at the start of the game. So us three loads of lads will start the game, but we've kind of agreed unofficially, haven't we? The whichever one of us three is on the bench. Um, we're going to kind of subsume the role of manager, but obviously at the start that will be difficult because we'll all be on the pitch. Um, but we'll we'll work it out. We'll work it out. And we'll have to we'll have to pick our mad dog. Lisa said that as well. We'll have to pick our mad dog on the sidelines. Um, hey, we've got we've got two here. We've got we've got how how and Tyndall here. That's that's a up for, up for the challenge. <laughs> yeah. Who's who's more mad dog out of you two? You, you guys know each other. Who's more mad dog out of Adam oh. P and, and Josh? Oh, that's actually a good question, that you know. <laughs> you can't say what, well, well, to be honest. Um, um, I, I, I guess me, I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I actually agree with that, you know. I can just, I'm the, I'm the sort of subtle one. I don't say it too much, and there's him over there just going absolutely ballistic. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, we'll look forward to seeing that on Friday. That's for sure. Definitely. Uh, one here from Johnny Green. He asked the question: Would you guys take fifteen million for Sean Longstaff of of, uh, of last season with only one year on his contract? Fifteen million seems a bit low for me. I'm yeah. taking that. I'm taking that and running me, lads. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, um, well, I don't think a contract would be an issue because I'm, I'm sure Longstaff would. Offer contract but now nah, 15 million pounds is something that still you can argue has his best years ahead of him i like long stuff I, I do actually like him quite a bit um problem this season being is the fact that guy's playing every single bloody game you can just tell he's knackered he needs to rest the, just rest the guy but i think as an actual to- uh, rotation player sorry i think he's someone that can do a good job and i think he's worth more than 15 million can i can i just wade in on this i just want to remind everyone as well again. It's not that long ago, is it, boys, that we nearly we nearly sold Sean Longstaff for five hundred grand. So if someone offered me fifteen million now, I'm 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 like Josh, I'm taking it. I do I do I take Adam's point though. Sean Longstaff's a good age, um, and you know when fit, when when he's not carrying an injury, he, he he's a good squad player. He's a good he's a good Premier League player. Um, but fifteen million is tempting. Cold hard cash, and let's not forget he's a he's a product of the academy. So that's that's all all money's into the coffers, isn't it? But Chris, good question. Good question. Chris, Forrest will give us twenty. Ooh. It was, it was, a, it was Take that. <laughs> Forrest will give us twenty. So yeah, maybe, maybe it's not enough. Maybe he'd be excited yeah, for Forrest. Right. Or or long staff Onana part of a swap deal, money involved. Yes. Yeah. Morgan Gibbs White as well. Yeah. Where, yeah. To be fair, he's always been destined for Everton. He was nearly there, 500 grand, as he you was. mentioned. He was. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, we'll move on. Uh, no one from Alan Thompson. Lads, if I had, if you had, a, if you had a choice, what would you name St. James's Park if it meant we get 20, 30 million a year in sponsorship? Well, Wait. If we've got 30 million a year just for a new name, we can nail up whatever the hell they want. So they're going to give it that much money. There's no way I, I think we could ever get anything like that for stadium uh, name sponsor. I don't know what the, the money would be, but surely it wouldn't be that high. Um, I mean, it's a, it's a debate whether you would change the name at St. James Park, but I don't think it's that big of a question. It's not like, would you move from St. James Park or would you get rid of the stadium? It's just, would you change the name? And, I know, I know on the, the sports director you know, it was an absolute farce because, you know, the money wasn't going back in the club. It was just quite insulting seeing sports director actually get be the name at St. James. But now you know the money's going to go back in the club. And I, I think I think with the way football is going, most stadiums are going to have their own sponsor name anyway. So it's something that I don't mind so much. Uh, if we get a good amount of money, then name up with whatever they, whatever they want, to be honest. Uh, I'm in agreement with Adam there as well. I mean, honestly, they could literally name it anything. But um, I think most, most, I was very skeptical about actually changing the name of St. James's Park, but 20 to 30 million pounds being chucked about, genuinely, they can change it whatever they want. The, 
I was pretty skeptical if it was going to be something like the Saudi Airlines Arena or something. Like that. I don't really like the name of Arena. I think that's really modernized. But I know the sort of the Emirates Stadium, the Etihad Stadium, that is their sponsor. And of course, for another example, Bournemouth, there's is the, the Vitality Stadium, I believe it is. One of my mates, he still calls it Dean Court. So it's not like as if it's taken the heart and soul out of yeah. Newcastle United. It still would be St. James's Park, but would be mm. getting an extra £30 million on the bank. Yeah, I'm, I'm taking that all day. Yeah. It could even be that they end up putting like an extension on the name. So it could be, you know, something at St. James's Park. So, or, uh, you know, everyone will still refer to it as St. James's Park, but, you know, there'll be a name attached to it as well. Nice to see Mad Dog and, and Eddie agreeing on, on this one as well. Uh, <laughs> but let's go to this one. I think we'll finish off on, on this one because uh, Lisa asks a good question. Kind of saying the loaded team is looking great for a Friday, but question for you all. Which player on the other team do you fear the most? I, I, I can't say, lads, because I haven't played against them. So yeah. just to help your confidence, I don't fear anyone. But that's because I haven't played them before. So, <laughs> yes. so you, you can tell me, lads. <laughs> I think we, we mentioned uh, Johnny's brother is, is a good player. Mm. Um, he, he's played well. Um, to be fair, Josh was a good defender. He, he, he played well at the back last year. Um, who else is there? Um, we don't know who who's going to turn up for them uh, because they tried to get Matty last year and Matty couldn't make yes. it. Yes, but now Matty signed for us, uh, so it could mean that they 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 um they're looking elsewhere. We we, we don't really know who's who's going to turn up for them. But um, uh, what might happen though is that. I know, I know. Lee Lawler's played in goal for them before. I know he's 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 played in goal in a few of their matches, so he might be one to look out for. I'm not sure how well he's played in goal, but uh, it'll be nice to put one past. He's, him. he's doing well. He's doing well. I've seen, I've seen the videos of of um, Lee in goal before. He's he's great for the camera. The the dice. Yeah, <laughs> it'll, be, it'll be nice to put one past him. That's for sure. Uh, or a few, <laughs> or a few for his own. Uh, but yeah, we, uh, it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting. Looking forward to it. Nice one. I'll probably I'll probably pick Josh to be fair as an attacking player because I'm pretty sure Josh has actually walked to Wembley, which is I mean that's pretty impressive walking when you cast at Wembley. So he's definitely got some fitness on him. Um, I don't know if you like the fact that Castle fans TV have their own live stream again. They're going to be broadcasting the match. So they must be super confident in the back of their minds. Must be thinking, oh, you know what? Yeah. We're going to beat them. Yeah. Nothing, so I, I don't like this mentality I'm getting from over there, you know, so we've got to make sure we're, we're humble them a little. Uh, it's, this is the second we score, she would just up to their camera and lie, she, you know, a bit waiting for <laughs> Get your shearers ready. Get your shearers ready. <laughs> yeah, I think Matt, should do an ad by a fish and go right um, through um, uh, no, um, listen, we'll, we'll have a good time. Um, I'm confident we're going to win. You lads clearly got a lot of subs there. You clearly thought about tactically how we're going to be able to the, the change moment in the game. I think me and Josh realised the weekend how important subs are towards the end of the game. They, they were able to pick us apart because we had a lack of subs compared to them. We were rotating, I mean, actual Sunday league players. So, uh, yeah, we'll be all right. I'm pretty sure. I'm confident. I'm looking forward to it. I'm just, I just know in the back of my mind we've gotten this year. We're going to have them. <laughs> Love it. Love it. Do you know what I reckon we do, lads? Do you know what I reckon we do, right? We set up how we set up against Paris Saint Germain at home, right? We we'll absolutely smash them in the first 10 minutes of the game. And then we'll put out the performance of uh, the 0 0 draw away against Arsenal last season. We'll just <laughs> full on defensive the whole game just to annoy them. <laughs> Press, low block. Like it. Loaded. <laughs> yeah. We'll just be known as the loaded shit ass mags. That, that, that's, that's what we'll be known. Bottle, of, champ the... bottle of champagne when we win on the live stream. Shh. <laughs> <laughs> love it love it oh quality that's it I think that's for the questions um, nice spot on well look great show uh, as always Adam Josh absolute pleasure um, to have you with us um, for the show tonight as well, as long along with Matthew as well um, really looking forward to seeing you boys on Friday um, all kitted up ready to to play some football and of course um if if anybody in the chat hasn't already donated to what is a fantastic cause the Alan Shearer Foundation please do 
Um, no matter how little or how big it is, any donation is really, really um, meaningful and it makes a difference. So we're sort of 50, 60 pound away from our, our target that we set ourselves right at the beginning um, with Loading Mag and UFC and, and, and Newcastle Fans TV. Um, so if you haven't, please, it be it, it means everything. And, um, and of course, um, all the fun and games about the football uh, aside, you know, um, it is doing this for a great cause. We did it for the, the Gateshead Food Bank last year and raised lots of money for the, for a great cause there. Um, we have a share foundation this year. So please, um, if you haven't already, um, just like I say, uh, a donation would, would, would mean the world to us all. So thank you. Cheers, lads. Uh, shout out as well. Just a quick, very quick shout out because we had on last night as well to the radiatorshed.com, our sponsors in Russ. We look forward to seeing on, on Saturday and actually at, at the game as well. The Russ is going to turn up to the game as well. So you uh, say hello to Russ uh, on the day. And also a shout out to H2O Bathroom Design Co. Uh, that is it. We will, next time you see us, we'll probably be in Newcastle. Anyone that's, that's out and about. But uh, until then, how'd you like that? Good night, everyone.